This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Yeah, let's find out. Is it a myth or is it a reality? Well, we know that successful lower extremity uh, vein bypass surgery, it's uh, technically demanding, requires a high level of skill and judgment. Uh, the hemodynamic be benefits are immediate and durable, and as we heard a little in the last session about some of the pluses and minuses of it, but um, you know, here's what one of the course chairs looks like when he's in the operating room doing one of these bypasses, very content, um, taking a break. But if you pan out a little bit, you notice uh, there's a little bit of action in this area. We've got some boredom in this area uh, and a very large incision here. And um, as you can imagine, when things are moving at this pace, this case takes a little while um, to get the good outcomes that Dr. Owens shows you. And every now and again, we face this, which is uh, you know, a wound that hasn't healed or a, uh, you know, in, in this case, a bypass graft at the base of this. Um, and so these infections, are common. Uh, basically, uh, they've been reported ever since there's been series about lower extremity bypass. There's been reports about wound complications. The rates have been 5 to 40 percent uh, for decades. Uh, and really, it depends on a little bit where you look. If you look at these um, large multi center trials, Prevent 3 and Basal, uh, rates were 23 to 39 percent. This is all within 30 days. If you look at uh, big databases like the NISQIP, Kaiser, uh, NIS, at the National Inpatient Sample, you get something in the 11% range. Uh, if you look at something like the VQI, which is you know, uh, you know sort of run by and for vascular surgeons, try and capture more uh, sort of factors that are appropriate for looking at this, the overall rate was 4.8%, but the range is anywhere from zero to 30%. Um, so, the thing that we do know about these wound complication rates is that it, it certainly drives length of stay and cost. And from the big NISQIP uh, database, they found that uh, there was a 22% uh, rate of a prolonged length of stay greater than 10 days uh, versus only 12% if there was no wound complication. Uh, and similarly with PREVENT-3, uh, you see this uh, significantly longer length of stay uh, about 10 days versus 8 days, and actually significantly more rehospitalizations, 1.8 versus 1.3. And uh, with more days in the hospital, there's, of course, higher costs. So if we take a look at what all these big series have identified in terms of risk factors for wound complications, uh, female gender, obesity or BMI over 30, critical limb ischemia, end-stage renal disease, malnutrition, all sort of the factors that we were hearing about with uh, the challenges of critical limb ischemia in the last session. There have been some things looking at uh, non-chlorhexidine, so in other words, iodine skin prep having higher wound infection rates, uh, blood transfusions, prolonged case length, groin incisions. And in a lot of ways, many of these are unavoidable. These are the patients that we treat. They have critical limb ischemia, can't really do anything to change that uh, before the case. And oftentimes, some of these technical factors in terms of transfusions and case length, that's just the complexity of the case, and that's kind of what's necessary for an effective revascularization. So, so far, we've kind of come up with chlorhexidine skin prep as possibly being one way to reduce this risk of complication. Um, so I just thought we'd go through a couple of the things that are out there. Uh, one thing that, of course, has gotten a lot of press are these surgical care improvement, keep the patient warm, get their Foley out within 24 hours, make sure they get perioperative antibiotics. Looking at a very large sample, 109,000 patients in five years and then 54,000 patients in follow-up, basically there was no significant change in the rate, about 2% versus 2.3% in infection. So if we're going to sort of do this you know, myth buster style, reality versus myth, we're going to give this the mythical unicorn and call it a myth. These skip measures do not reduce wound infection rates. 
Uh, now, this was a systematic review of all 34 randomized controlled trials these authors could find uh, looking at ways to reduce the risk of wound infections um, in lower extremity bypass. They found, um, you know, in the Journal of Obvious Results that perioperative antibiotics will reduce wound infection rates, uh, but no significant difference if you did the antibiotics for more than 24 hours, if you used a closed suction drain. Uh, if you used uh, preoperative antimicrobial baths or if you did an in situ bypass. So this gets the real horse reality, preoperative antibiotics reduce wound infection rates. Uh, to take this a step further, this group presented this at the American Surgical, a randomized controlled trial of Kefsol plus vancomycin versus Kefsol plus daptomycin to reduce MRSA rates. There's some problems here, like they actually don't know what the uh, underlying colonization of MRSA is in their population. In any case, there was no different in, a difference in the surgical site infection risk. The Kefsol plus vancomycin had fewer gram-positive infections, but they only had one MRSA infection overall. So, uh, you know, the reality is Kefsol plus vancomycin is probably a safe perioperative antibiotic regimen. I don't know you can say more than that. So some other things, vein harvest, um, looking at both the systematic review of all the literature out there for endoscopic vein harvest, as well as VQI data, basically came up with, if compared to a single long continuous segment, skip incisions really show no difference in wound complications or patency. Endoscopic vein harvest uh, has really no advantage in terms of the wound uh, outcomes and has worse patency outcomes. So that's another unicorn. Um, how about if we uh, coat the sutures with an antimicrobial, triclosan? No, that didn't work either. Um, 500 patients randomized to either a silver impregnated al uh, alginate dressing versus gauze. No, still had a 30% wound infection rate in that case. And so I think really what the reality here is that these infections have existed and we really haven't been able to do much to change them. And so I think we're missing something. Um, on a certain level, these patient and technical factors we're probably not going to be able to change. It's a disvascular leg with impaired delivery of oxygen and nutrients. And, you know, one thing that is interesting is leg edema. There have been some studies that actually have shown on MRI that you get inflammation of the whole uh, leg, all, all the muscle beds, and sort of going with Arachilus pepinos' talks yesterday about the uh, alterations in the muscle uh, biology and uh, histo histology. You know, there's, there's probably something here in terms of the cytokines and the, you know, the whole sort of milieu of the leg um, that leads to this edema that also impairs wound healing. And so I think in summary, you know, we can optimize the patient level factors, but we're not going to be able to completely reverse all of them. Uh, Postoperative edema control may help, and certainly some of the things like Chris was mentioning, uh, high-dose perioperative statins may reduce these cytokine factors that are, are driving some of this. Um, and, you know, and so local wound treatments that help with uh, local edema may reduce complications, but we still don't have the answer yet. Thank you.